Good evening to everybody. I'm Christian, but most importantly, this is Einari, the director of Karaoke Paradise. So let's give him another applause. <laughs> He's not only a really good director, but he's a really good performer and singer because yesterday after the screening at Kex, we have a riff party, karaoke party, and he sang and he was really, really good. So, <laughs> my first question, when did you start to go to karaoke? But most important, when did you have the idea to do this film? Yeah, uh, the idea for the film Surprise, surprise, was, uh, came to me in a karaoke bar. Uh, yeah, I, in 2018, in the spring, and I, I already went to karaoke bars quite a, quite a lot before the idea came. And um, yeah, when I sang, sang first time, maybe when I was 20, uh, I don't know, the, the, the place where I grew up, small uh, town in central Finland, that was a place where you're not really encouraged to express your emotions or really be expressive at all. So all, all my life has been battling against <laughs> shame. And, you know, in high school, my biggest fear would have been to, to be myself in front of a crowd like this, you know. So for me, karaoke has been a really big help for overcoming uh, shame. And of course, doing Q&As. And also, the most important things of these films are the stories of the people. How did you find all these incredible stories, and how much did it take to find every of your protagonists? Yeah, actually, I was here with my first film in Riff, uh, 2017. Werner Herzog was the main uh, guest at the time, and he had a master class, and he, I remember clearly, he, he was saying that the most important part is the casting. So I really <laughs> did my homework with this film. Um, yeah, well, all started from, from this book that I found about Finnish karaoke. Two journalists had been touring Finland uh, two years, ten years before I, I got the idea for the film. And uh, they had found Evi, the karaoke hostess, and then when I opened the page of the book where there was a photo of her, I instantly, you know, there was something about her and I found her from Facebook and then uh, I called her and our first phone call took three hours where she <laughs> explained everything about her life. So I was, yes, perfect. And she uh, then, because, you know, she had already been touring so many years and so many thousands of gigs and I asked her, so can you tell me the, you know, why Finnish people are singing karaoke? And she gave me four reasons. Uh, one is that they are lonely. Uh, two, that they have lost somebody. Three, that they are ill or sick. And four, that they have fallen in love. So that was my uh, four story arts that I started to look for. And uh, Tony, the young guy, uh, me and my producer, we were uh, having a meeting in a karaoke bar. And then we saw this young man who, it's almost empty, empty bar at five in the afternoon and he, he's there to sing the first three songs. And then my producer was like, hey, you have to go talk to him. And then uh, I went to his table and I said that, well, uh, this is a very awkward question, but you know, would you like to be in a film? And he's like, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. So you have to, and his bravery to, just to jump in in a project like this was amazing. Then uh, we had a social media uh, campaign or page uh, where we said that we are looking for people to, per uh, to participate in the film. And then uh, Laura and Elena, they wrote us so incredibly uh, touching letters. And then when I went to see them, I instantly uh, you know, realized that they had two more characters. And then I did uh, so much uh, Googling, uh, typing different combination of karaoke, ambulance, karaoke, police, karaoke, fire station, and then I just uh, karaoke car, car repair shop. And then <laughs> I, I got this hit with Kari and oh my God. Yeah, I thought, you know, uh, Finns and, uh, you know, Icelandic share, you know, so I, I think that we share a type of humor and then 
And I knew that we Finns are, we can do crazy stuff, but that, that was even, you know, I had never participated in anything like this. <laughs> Probably all these random places where people are singing are one of the most funny parts of your film. So it takes a very long time to find all of them, I think. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Then it, it was like a domino effect. Once we, we got the word out and then we've been filming in karaoke bars and then kind of words spread and then we started to have a lot of uh, suggestions and then uh, for example, we, we were shooting in one karaoke bar, and then one guy that we filmed, he says that, hey, by the way, I have a karaoke in my sauna, where me and my wife are singing, and then I'm like, okay, we would love to come there, and then, then this amazing uh, moment where the stereotype of Finnish expression of emotions <laughs> comes, comes out. And you're telling about expressing your emotion, and the thing that I love about this film is that karaoke is not a thing that you do one day, it's a part of a lifestyle and it's also part of the healing process. So how is it possible that how can karaoke be so important to express yourself and to heal your soul? Yeah, well, first of all, uh, there is a really big healing power when we are being seen and heard, you know, just somebody recognizes uh, us, it, it, it has a huge healing power. And then, uh, at least in Finland, it works that, you know, uh, in, in Finnish karaoke, everybody gets applauses, you know, once you get onto stage, it doesn't matter if you're old, young, fat, thin, uh, you know, whatever social class. I think people appreciate the fact that you, you get on stage and you show your vulnerability to, to others and then people uh, applause you for that, you know, being, being that brave. And, and then, uh, like, yeah, all these, uh, if you're sick or lonely, and like Eddie says in the film that, you know, in a, if you go to a disco, uh, you could sit there all night, but once you go and you know, on stage and sing, somebody will come and comment your songs, so you have, to, you have that connection to somebody. And then, um, you know, if it's difficult to find words for the emotions you're going through, or problems, or whatever you have, the, the bad things in, inside of you, and if you don't have words to express that, then in karaoke you can choose a song that somebody else has written, you know, and then you can kind of take that song as your own and then express the, uh, whatever bad feelings you have through that song. So uh, it, it really works in that way. Okay, and I'm curious about the title. Why, okay, karaoke is kind of easy, but why paradise? I'm curious about the word paradise. Yeah, I'm not a religious person, but I, well, it, it kind of mashes two things together, karaoke, which is, you know, I hear somebody say that it's a hillbilly thing to do, or this, you know, and then paradise, which has a lot of, uh, you know, connotations. So I, I like this combination, and then I, I really see it as a paradise on earth, you know, the Finnish karaoke bar, because if you think how many places we have in the world that, uh, you know, celebrates the fact that we are not perfect, you know. Like, we can, we can be happy that we make mistakes and faults and we get applauded for it. I mean, that, that's a beautiful place to be. Because all, all this Facebook and social media, we try to portray the best image that we have, you know, put, put the really nice photo. Uh, probably right now my wife is taking a photo of me and then here I am and trying to look really cool and then I post it on Facebook. But in, in karaoke, I find it really interesting that, you know, uh, we go there, we're not perfect, and then other, other people really find, uh, find a connection with that uh, imperfection. So karaoke is kind of a celebration of our faults and imperfections. Yeah, so you have here your first num number one for su supporter, your people like in the film, uh, she is always with you, but do you ever sing together? Yes, well, <laughs> hello there. Uh, 
Um, she didn't sing before uh, I started making this film, but then, but she has never sang alone. All, always she's asking uh, for us to sing together. Self control is her karaoke to go song. <laughs> and do we have question from the public? I'll give you time to think, and I have another question for you. It's a really thing that is really rooted in your uh, culture, but is it the same for the new generations? Are even young people are still going to karaoke, and this is common even in new generations? Yeah, I guess it depends on the on the city and and what kind of karaoke bar it is. You know, there are these trendy bars in Helsinki, for for example, Tony. He, he goes to this really fashionable karaoke place for, for some reason, but uh, uh, like, like he finds, finds it really interesting, that place. So, you know, if, if, you, if you go away from the capital area, you, you see young people singing those Finnish songs that were made in the city. Version, all right. Yeah, well, uh, my first song probably, it, it could have been Stand By Me, I, I still, that, that's my, like, I, I, I try to, uh, try to, I like to try new, new songs, but that's always the, like the uh, song if I don't come up with anything else. And if Kari has found somebody, no, no, he hasn't found so far. Uh, yeah, let's see. The film was in in cinemas uh, in in August in Finland, uh, but the weather was so nice, and somehow in Finland uh, people don't really consider documentaries something that they go to see in cinemas. So we didn't get so many uh, people to see it. Uh, yeah, always people think that. We're, Okay, when it comes from TV, then I will watch it. So it's going to come from TV next year. So hopefully, hopefully then there's going to be a lot of uh, hardworking women, <laughs> aged 55 to 62. And, so. and do you have still a relation with the other characters and protagonists of the film? And did you ever sing together? That's a good question. Uh, yeah. Actually, Kari just sent me a message today that hey, where are you going now and how is it going? So, and yeah, I, I all, all the time feed them with images wherever the film is shown and so on. And what was the other question? Well, if you ever sing together. Oh yeah, if, if we ever sang together. Yes, uh, there was one interview just before the uh, film came to the cinemas and then me and uh, Evi and Elena were, no, it, it was me, Elena and Tony, we were singing together. Uh, but actually I, I've been going with Tony quite a lot to different karaoke bars and <laughs> so he, he's, he's, he's really improved, you know, like uh, I, I was so, I felt so lucky to, to have that, uh, to be able to see that process, what really happened to him. Sometimes, you know, the film affects the reality, so I don't know, all, all this uh, publicity that came with, with the film to him, it, it really kind of changed him. Like when he, in that karaoke bar when, where we saw him first, he was kind of singing like this, you know, like protecting himself. And now he's like, you know, like a rock star. It's amazing, <laughs> amazing process. Are there any questions? Yes. asking about online karaoke. Do they have online karaoke in uh, Finland? Yeah, the, uh, we have this Finnish uh, uh, karaoke, 
company that they try to be be like the Spotify of, of karaoke. <laughs> and they uh, founded a page in Facebook called Quarantine Karaoke. Uh, it was done right after the bars closed. And my God, <laughs> you know that people can send their own songs there. And it, it's like a, that, that's a really like, uh, like an open window to the Finnish soul in a way, because people are, you know, somebody are in a cellar or, you know, wherever in their house singing. And so you see people's living rooms and then they are singing songs. And I think the most popular uh, performance, they get like 60,000 likes, which is an incredible number for, for Finnish karaoke scene. We have time for another question. Okay, you. Yeah, well, everything is about collaboration with, with them. Uh, since, you know, Finnish documentary budget, it, it's not that huge ever. If you go to Denmark, it's three times bigger. I, I'm sure in Iceland it's the same, same thing. Um, and since the characters were living in different parts of Finland, so we really had to know what we kind of go and film. So it's then it's about question, uh, sorry, conversation with them, like what's gonna happen in your life. And uh, we participated in two uh, screenwriting workshops, one in Estonia and one in Greece. And it really helped because I remember having this fear that what if the story is that there's a person with a problem, person sings and problem solved. So if that happens five times, nobody will come to see the film. So to try to find this orchestration of, of the storylines and how we can var vary them and, and so on. So, uh, but yeah, like Kari was saying that he, he, he wants to leave an ad in the newspaper and then he's going to go to a dance and, and then he's saying, yeah, I'm going to go with my uniform and I'm like, okay, <laughs> we definitely have to come there. <laughs> And then, okay. <laughs> Thank you.